Welcome everyone to a casted game for Age of Empires 4 and today spawning on the east side of the map playing in blue we've got Marine Lord playing as the Jean d'Arc faction and his opponent in the southwest playing in red we've got Louis MT playing as the Holy Roman Empire. Welcome everyone to Gorge. Interesting map, interesting civilization I've got to say too. Well I guess to be fair I was going to say two civilizations that have power spikes in different ages but actually the yeah, HRE have kind of changed a little bit. We've got Jean d'Arc, traditionally known as a feudal age powerhouse, but the HRE can pack a punch in the feudal age as well. Especially with the new marching jewels tech that they get for free in the, well, right from the Dark Age. So they get the extra movement speed on those infantry units, and that does actually change things quite dramatically. We've got, of course, Jean d'Arc have the mobility with the French Royal Knight, likely to get the School of Cavalry nice and early to put some pressure on the HRE, which typically used to be a very heavy castle age civilization. Used to want to try and race up to there, get those relics. But nowadays, they can actually make a bit of a fight in the feudal age. Kind of excited to see how this one's played out with Louis MT versus Marine Lord today. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are in the world. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, two great civilizations, of course, battling it out. That's a lot of sheep, I've got to say. Louis MT going to be having lots of fun with that. It's actually quite important as well, because on a map like Gorge, where the resources are pretty far away, like the deer camps aren't particularly close, well, this is a pretty good one, to be fair, for Louis. In fact, this is a great one for Louis. He could actually wall that into the gold and then to the TC. That's not bad at all. And the reason why that's so good is because, of course, the HRE do chew through their food very quickly with the 40% buffering on the villager gather rate because of the prelate. It's an incredibly strong bonus that they get. Jean d'Arc faction, she is uh, going to be mining away on that gold vein and quite likely to put some pressure on the feudal age. Now, on a map like Gorge, what's kind of interesting is that players do have that direct route of access to their enemy right through the middle of the map. But then, of course, also the corners of the map become very important. Look at this right side of the corner. Boar, berries, wood, gold, all you can imagine, all you can need. And, of course, the same is on the west side for Louis MT. And it's going to be the Arkham Chapel, as you'd expect. No real surprises there for the HRE, and it's going to be a school of cavalry. Again, no real surprises for Jean d'Arc. In fact, this is actually interesting. Going to go for a second town study. We have been increasingly seeing this, actually. The HRE. It's kind of cool to see because, of course, their economy does scale incredibly well with this. Especially with the 40% gather rate. The number of villages they can pump out really quickly is amazing. I've got to say, though, it's uh, it's one of those tricky situations, though, because, of course, the Jean d'Arc faction does get the French Royal Knights. An incredibly strong powerhouse unit. And so, um, I mean, I, to be fair, on the map like Gorge... Whilst it is quite open and expansive in the middle, a lot of the resources at the back and the main base is pretty well protected, right? Because you've got the one main wood line, and whilst it's uh, you know, one area to attack, it's pretty well protected in the range of the town set, at least in the early stage. And then you can kind of get some walls, especially especially to here to the berries, actually. It's a pretty decent walling up map here for the HRE. So it's not that easy to raid, at least on that wood line. Now, with the second town centre, the question is, where does he place it? I wouldn't be surprised to see it on deer camp here, actually, near the wood line. But actually, you save up another bit of wood as well, which, you know, we talk about how there's only one major wood line, but a TC here with the with the deer and the wood line, that could be pretty, pretty nifty for Louis MT to scale that economy, but also make sure he's got his resources nice, safe, and secure. And now he's looking to rush up the Arkham Chapel. He's actually going to be... Uh, Getting an outpost first. Just not gold vein, just in case a knight does pop, come by popping through. He's got the uh, the resources that is a bit more, kind of, I guess, precarious to take, right? Stone, he's gathered it, what he needed, just to make sure that he's not put off for getting a second town center. Now it's going to be working as well on wood. The Arkham Shackle, up and running. It's looking good for the HRE as a start. There's a French Royal Knight queued up in the School of Cavalry, going to be making his way across the map relatively soon. Marine Lord just scouting out exactly what he wants to hit. Now, he does spot, obviously, the stone vein there, with the stone that has been taken. We'll be eyeing up where his enemy is going to be placing that second down centre. Now, with the movement of the knight now on the field, I mean, Louis MT can't be too expansive with the second town centre placement. He's going to have to try and find a safe route and location for it. A knight could just come out and camp here, actually. That might actually force in a uh, barracks place. That's going to go on the right side of the wood line. I mean, in a way, 
whilst it's not going to be able to take the deer camp so easily, what it does do is it, it saves and protects that wood line really nicely and also allows the farming transition nicely and protected. Which, you know, I mean, ultimately it doesn't always feel like a nice thing to do to get farms super early, but ultimately with the HRE, the 40% gather rate, it does pay dividends quite quickly. So it'd be cool to see. Either way, guys, on YouTube, if you're watching later on on YouTube, I hope you guys are having a great day. We are actually casting live on Twitch these days a little bit more, so welcome in everyone on Twitch chat. How are you doing, Mod Nod? Thanks for casting this game. I missed it. Yeah, I, I've... Uh, I've missed a lot of the Slapfest. I've been working a lot this weekend. Um, yeah, I've, I've, it's been a bit tricky one because I've kind of been part-time content creation, so it's kind of a situation where I really want to commit to a lot of casting and, and Age of Empires 4, but at the same time, I've got to make ends meet, right? So it's a scenario where I'm kind of halfway in between doing both part-time sort of thing. But what's kind of cool about it is that I can watch it fresh with new eyes and a new lens, fresh perspective, and see the games without knowing the results in a big way. Although... Yeah, I don't really know how to who wins who won each bracket because I don't know if it's a there's a losers bracket. There might be. There might drop down to a loser bracket if people do lose or not. Either way, it's gonna be a cracking game. Now, Marine Lord, what I kind of anticipated on this map is actually kind of difficult to do damage nice and early, and I feel like Louis is playing this super nice for this particular approach, knowing that Gorge is a not an easy map to punish on in the early game. It does favour those town centre booming approaches, and that's what Marino's going to look to try and match as well. But this is a dicey situation, right? I think the fact that HRE have changed up their playstyle is really, really, really fascinating, because of course there used to be a civilization that plays one town centre into Castle Age, and so the enemies had choices, right? They could try and put some pressure on the Feudal Age, kind of an all-in play. They could go for a second town centre themselves and try and outscale the economy, whilst the HRE go to the Castle Age. But now the HRE is saying, hey, hang on a minute, we can do Feudal Age 2. Going for a second town center themselves actually forces their enemy into something. The enemies have to be forced into maybe a fast castle build themselves. Feudal Age pressure. And uh, in this scenario, second town center, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't quite like it because it's a situation where the HRE economy is just straight up better. And if you're trying to match the HRE economy... It always feels rough. It always feels like it's something that's not going to be able to be achievable. So it's going to be a situation where Renewal is going to try and keep up, but he's not going to be able to catch him. Because of that, he's going to need to do damage to compensate. Speaking of doing damage, Knight does charge in on the scout, and well, Louis MT, he's paying attention. So certainly with the second town center addition here for Marine Lord, he's going to keep up with the village camp, but he needs to do some damage. And HRE kind of pulling the strings here, got that second town center nice and early, meant that he has a full villager lead. There's plenty of farms coming up. Now behind this, look at the timing for the car stage though as well. It's actually kind of crazy how he's managing to do this, Louis. That is the power of the HRE economy after all. But what this does allow is really able to get a couple of more units on the field. Obviously, very gold and food heavy units. Doesn't mean he's going to delay his castle age, but he does have a couple of knights. The question is, what damage can they do? And this is where things feel a bit rough for Jean in this map and this matchup. Because with some static defenses, with the Arasis already in the outpost on this gold vein, he's nice, well, and protected. He's got some spearmen as well. By the time any archers come across, it's going to be tricky to do any damage. Now, said that. Jean does have the Divine Arrow ability to be able to use, if he so wishes, if she so wishes. Just make it a move through the wood line and see if we can get some damage here, but too close to the town centre really doing things significant. Give Dub mentions, haven't played AoE in a month, I need to get back into it. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those situations where sometimes with the game having patches every so often, every couple of months, it's uh, tricky to get back into the game sometimes because so many things change. And it's going to be that castle age with the Regent's Cathedral looking to challenge for those relics and it's going to be a good situation to be able to try and do that with, especially if he gets barracks out, spearmen units out because he'll be able to pressurize on the map but one thing to bear in mind, Marino does have a good amount of units on the field. But he's just committing to a second outpost. i got to say this is being more prevalent in Age of Empires 4 these days, the second outpost in the Gorvain. It used to be enough to have one town center, but uh, one outpost rather, not anymore. 
We just have to back away. Two garrison, five of them. Spearmen going to try and do as much damage to the knights as possible. Two of them dive in, but we'll lose one most likely. There it is. Louis MT gets that garrison age. Marine Lord, he's an age behind. And he's two villages behind as well. Yeah, has caused a bit of idle time, which certainly helps. And we'll deny the fluid and smooth gold income. Spearmen are going to chase down Jean. Divine Arrow comes out, snipes a villager. Now it's going to run away. Now behind all of this, it looks like Marino looking to get to that castle. He kind of needs it at this point, really. And certainly needed to try and match what the HRE are up to. Bear in mind, though, with the map positioning that the units are for Jean, it does feel a bit rough for the HRE gathering relics. One thing to bear in mind is that the farming transition is sort of well underway for the HRE. There's going to come a time where Jean needs to do the same. And that's going to be tough on the wood economy, so the pressure won't be able to mount out forever. There will be a bit of a gap, although might lose a villager. There it is, snipes one. And Marine Lord equalising the village count. Plenty of barracks being built. Give me man arms spearmen. A nice army composition. Obviously very heavy, heavily infantry based, but no real problem with doing that, because of course no mangonels just yet with Marine Lord still in the feudal age and a little bit of time to get to the castle age because you have to build the landmark and that's not going to come quickly god that's a lot of villagers taking that boy he really wants it it's going to go for the berries at the same time so massive influx of food on that right side this is where it becomes interesting because of course the HRE now and the castle age have been for a while might start to push on out First relic has been brought back. There's going to be plenty of gold coming in now for the HRE. Now that double outpost and relic is already in play. Night diving on the villages and berries. Doesn't quite manage to get too much out of that. But certainly, the HRE economy incredibly safe and secure. Having said that, this gold vein has probably got about half of it left. In fact, less than half. That does mean he's going to have to venture out at some point. But with that number of units already... It's not going to be looking too bad for Louis Empty to push on out, and that's exactly what he's doing. And it will be the guild hall for that castle age. Consecration comes in for a lot of these structures, the School of Cavalry and the Town Centre, making the food cost of those villages and the knights reduced quite significantly. And Tom's going to chase it all down and... Not enough archers there to deal with the spearmen realistically, and the spearmen are going to make sure those knights can't really ever dive in. Heavy mace is coming in as well, but that's definitely going to be helping trade really effectively against the knights. So, a bit of a specialty for the for the HRE, being able to do that. Going to pick up the relic in the middle, and this is powerful actually. Picking up two relics already for Louis MT is, is really nice. If you can get a third, it'll be uh, the icing on the cake. Oh, try to get a third one from the prelate in the north, but will be sniped by Marine Lord. Takes him out pretty quickly, and of course you can see now the veteran Royal Knight upgrade is in. We're going to get Monastery right near that relic on the right side, so going to be picking that up ASAP. Jean being used to take a sacred site. Now because of the closed quarters economy for the HRE, it's made it really difficult for Jean to gather XP, and so she's still... On level 2. Now that's quite significant. So if you're also wondering what level you can gather the sacred sites with with Jean, it doesn't matter. You could pick up at any level as long as you're in the castle age. Right, he's chasing it down. Does he use a scout? Arbiter Trio is starting to build up here for Marine Lord. If he can gather many of those units, that could be problematic for Louis MT actually. He has to be careful about that situation because, of course, Abdul Trio will do great against the Heavy Mace's Man at Arms, but also against the Spearmen too, decently well. Divine Restoration comes out for Jean to heal on up those units. The Knights are chasing. Divine Arrow comes on up. Decent number of Abdul Trio. Gotta be careful. I think Louis needs to try and get surround and take a fight if he can. Abdul Trio is keeping their distance. Nice as well. Diving the town centre somewhat. Spearman will die most likely, but 
Got some value already on the right side. Looking to get some really extensive walls here, Marine Lord. Doesn't quite manage it. Man sounds well patrolling. Is that Lou MT possibly thinking about getting a keep in the middle of the map? I wanted to see what it was going to do with these stone villages, although the stone has expired, so he's going to have to venture out somewhere else. And four relics have been snagged up by Lou MT. Fantastic play to be able to do that. It's really significant on that gold income. And this is where things become really tricky for Marine Lord because now is about the timing where farming tradition might need to start coming in. And as you can see, berries are almost pretty much taken. There's probably not that much food on the boar left. Yeah, only 600 food left. So there's a deer camp on the south, which Louis MT might try and put some pressure on. Ultimately, farming transition is going to need to come in relatively soon. Now, the guild hall will help with that a little bit with the transition because it does have a bit of food banked up on that. Going for the hairy stone outcropping on the west side. The second sacred site will counteract some of the gold that the HRE are picking up. The Langanel, some siege being added for HRE. It's looking pretty decent now. With the food and gold income, I wouldn't be surprised to see an Imperial Age coming out for Louis MT. And if he has a good standing army, that could put him in a good spot. But, I mean, with the number of units that Marino is starting to pump out, it could be dangerous as well. Langanel deploys. That's going to do great against the Arbolet Trier. And the issue about this situation is it forces Marino into a siege counterplay, right? He can't really deal with this. Can't really dive in with knights because of the spearmen. He's going to have to get some spring lords of his own. And that's going to take time. Either that, or it goes for Man at Arms. Man at Arms is always an option. It will be the Palace of Swabia placed a little bit. Oh, that's the keep, in fact. And the Palace of Swabia back at home. This is really great play by Liu MT. Playing it slowly and methodically, and a lot of players would be tempted just to go for the fast Imperial Age. And the fact that he's got the keep in that spot. It means that actually he's really well safe and protected, even if Marine Lord tries to push on in. Ultimately, he doesn't really feel like he's likely to be able to do so much damage with that, keeping the forward position. One thing to bear in mind though, this gold is an issue. It has to be safe and protected. It's protected so far by Palisades, which, I mean, they're okay, but they can melt pretty quickly at times. He's relocating a relic into the, the keep as well for good measure. Yeah, certainly in order to do some damage, Marine Lord will need some siege. And this is where things get a little bit out of hand for the HRE economy with the Palace of Swabia. They're printing villages like nothing. A decent chunk of wood still remaining in that wood line. And here's the siege production. It's starting to, to ramp up here. Quite literally ramping up. Marine Lord going to get two so far. And he's going to try and put some pressure on. The concern that he's up against is actually how well will that work with going up against a keep and this number of military units with the Imperial Age upgrades coming in, cannon emplacements coming on in. This is what HRE do best to get to the Imperial Age and then get the cannon emplacements and it's so hard to stop. Riding on the southeast side going to be burning down the palisades we talked about it earlier actually now this is a relatively exposed area it does have enough stone almost for a keep if it has a market now's the time to use it i think getting a keep in this position has to be done actually by louis because he's got two gold veins this is a position he cannot afford to lose and i was going to try and buy some time but it doesn't quite have enough having to back away because he can't really afford to take a fight here if the mangadas can deploy on the arbiter that would be ideal jean has gone up to level three so she's certainly more relevant in the fight now. And look at this. It looks like, yeah, Jean spots it. But Louis MT's reacted in time. He got the stone when he needed to. Keep will be up, and that means that gold will be safe and secure. And that will solidify the war efforts for the HRE for a little bit longer. Divine arrow actually used up on the, uh, the Manganel there. Manganel's having a tough time to deploy. Does deploy, eventually does get a shot off, but mostly on the cav. Oh, God, that was actually a decent amount of shot on the infantry in the end. But loses one Manganel. Village comes out to repair the other. Has a cover as well for good measure. Two rounds moving on in. Marine Lord putting some pressure on heavily. But with the Manganel still alive, he does split, but he manages to get a good shot off. Doesn't kill anything, but a decent amount of HP taken off the Arboletria. Manganel about to go down. Oh, that's a massive shot with the Manganel. So many of the Arboletria got so much HP taken off them. It's absolutely huge, but the HRE do need to get on top of those Arboletria to get to take them out, of course. There's still some really good shots. 
But Louis, he's got to find a way to solidify and stabilize. He does have emergency repairs, which will buy him some time. And that keep in a really good spot to protect the gold. But here come the more rams, and Marine Lord is on a timer. So if Louis can hold up for a little bit longer, if he can hold on for the next 10 minutes, he should be fine. He's getting all those blacksmith upgrades that he needs, but he needs units at this point. He needs to find a way to stop this push coming on in. Now, Louis might need to just tempt Marine Lord to pull him in and delay things as much as possible. But he's got to make sure he doesn't fight until he's ready. Behind this, by the way, Jean is going up to the Imperial Age with the Red Palace. With a lot of the maps secured, and I think actually the farming transition doesn't hasn't had to be made just yet. Because of the ability to take the deer in the south. What's going up here on the north? Trying to get access to the gold here. This is huge. Those two mana times are going to get a lot of value. Those villagers have been caught out. Oh, Abel Chen rams down in the south. Keep under pressure. Man at arms just destroying those villagers in the middle. Going to stop the walling up. Raiding with some man at arms around the back. Oh, this is a problem. Marine Lord, I don't think he spotted it. He's not reacting to it quick enough. Oh, that's a problem. That's a big problem. We'll come back to that in a moment because it keeps gone down in the south. Doesn't mean gold villagers. They uh, had to evacuate. Find other sources of gold. I mean, he does have four relics ultimately, so that's the big deal. Oh, the villagers on the wood line. Marine Lord's not spotting it. And by the time he does, it might just be too late. He's being raided to death. And there is that farming transition. It has come at the worst possible time for him. This is not the time they would have wanted it. And this is the power of the HRE early farming economy. That 40% buffering in the Ark and Chapel. He's spotted it now, but he's lost almost all of them. Don't forget marching drills is in, so they'll chase them on down. It's got, it's got an outpost with the cannon and placement. Great positioning. And the Rams are backing away, but it's going to be cool. Everything going wrong here for Marine Lord. Louis MT should take out these rams pretty quickly and easy. A lot of wood invested into this. Now that's a problem for Marine Lord for sure. He's heading up north to try and get rid of the man at arms that are there. There's only two of them He's setting his whole army. Maybe look to just fight in another direction. Now bear in mind the sacred sites have been activated, so that is a potential win condition for Marine Lord. But he's got to find a way to defend them. And it doesn't feel likely, but we'll have to see if he can manage it. Yeah, man at arms here on the west side will be forfeit, but ultimately with the amount of resources that are coming in for the HRE, it won't bother him too much. Sending the man at arms on the east side. Oh no, talking about gold and being denied for the HRE. Take a look at this gold for the Jean d'Arc faction. And the village is going to have to be pulled off elsewhere. The rest of the man's being, man at arms being cleaned up on the west side. Mass movement of villagers to the north to get stone. He wants to get another keep if he can. Oh, man at arms. Wait, wait, what? Louis, no! He just went past. Let's go for the gold around the back, maybe. But either way, he lost a bit of uh, an opportunity there. Maybe he didn't want to give an attack notification and go around the back instead. Either way, I can't help but feel like a bit of an opportunity was lost there. Does engage now on the farms. and He's denying a lot of food. You can see the food problem that Marine Lord has. It's a big, big problem with the food. The stone was coming up on the west side. Speaking of food, does that have berries and boy can take HRE, but it doesn't need to. Look at the farms he's got. He's making a dash through the middle. Looking good numbers here for Louis MT. He can focus the attack down the middle. Now with the palace on the right side, it does protect a lot of wood. So if this does come into a, a bit of a wood game, I think Marino has got a lot of it protected. A couple of man tiles being sent out on the villages and woodline, so look at to snipe a couple of those. And another two villages, another two man tiles rather, assaulting the villages in the north. I, this is such a great work by Louis MT, I've got to say. The movement of single units here and there, everywhere on the map, is giving them so much value in terms of idle time on villages. Not, not only that, but he has killed a lot on that woodline earlier. Forcing the mistakes out of Marine Lord. Now we'll lose a couple of man tiles down the middle to the Arbolatria mass, which is something to be a bit of a concern for the HRE. He's decapping the sacred sites, in fact, capturing them for himself. But certainly getting access to the sacred site, more gold is always welcome. These two villages will be sniped out by the Arbolatria most probably. He reacts in time, though. Louis MT saves them in the end. A big concern, I think, 
though, for the HRE, they've got to be careful about the Arbolatrio mass, right? It can be a powerful, powerful unit in the late game for Jean. Especially when you're going mass man at arms. It's kind of what they want. Hopefully good to get some cannon placements in the middle of the map. Really securing up the map. Getting stone walls on the east side as well. Ladies and gentlemen, looks like we're going to head into a late game situation for Gorge. HRE versus Jean. But the kind of crazy thing is, look what Louis MT is doing. 168 villagers. That's insane. We don't often see that much. And I love what he's doing, though, because he's getting the static defenses, getting in a superior, far superior economy. And he'll know he will have a crazy economy. He's building up the resources. And at one point, it feels like it's going to flick a switch. It's going to delete villagers, send them to their early grave, and then push out with military numbers. And he can just keep pumping because he'll have such a great bank of resources. Speaking of which, the bank resources are not all that great for Marine Lord. Going to add another third town centre. In fact, that is a... Wait, how many... Wait, what? He's getting another two. And it makes a lot of sense because it not only does it function as a good villager production structure, of course, a way to pump out villagers if you are raided. It's, of course, a great defensive structure with the increased emplacement in there because of the Red Palace, of course. Gets an additional arbalest for each garrison units. Also activates the arbalist emplacement in each town centre, as you'll see here. An interesting situation starting to emerge. It looks like Lou MT looking to perhaps take a sacred side victory, but look at the food coming in per minute. 3,000. More than double than the Jean d'Arc faction right now. Absolutely phenomenal. The eco... It's kind of crazy right now. Protected into Elite Horsemen, which I love to see, of course. Going up against Arbitria certainly helps, but with Gambesons with the melee unit, the melee armor, rather, on these guys, I mean, definitely going to need a large mass of horsemen. He, does it, he has enough to do some damage, I think. He's going to raid a little bit. I was kind of curious with the town center placements. It's near the farms, right? So it's not going to be as easy to raid. And even if uh, Jean does lose the villagers, she'll be able to replace them pretty quickly. Louis MT going to spot the town centers now. But what's great about the Horseman versus Arbolatria play is that it means he trades food and wood units for gold units, and there's obviously a limited gold on the map. Didn't get the keep up in the north, and it looks like, speaking of gold, as we were talking about it. We're you know, trying to secure it up. Oh, those man at arms getting in place. He's going to get a keep of his own here, Louis MT, to try and deny this. I mean, I'm not sure this keep even goes up. He doesn't. He has to cancel it. Village again. Marine Lord just has not been able to control that northern area of the map. And it's been a problem throughout the whole game. Man of Time Torsen diving on in. Divine Restoration comes out for Jean Arbolatria coming in into the mix. As is a Mangadel for the HRE. Man of Time's going to tank on that front line, it seems. Mostly Spearman here in this fight. Which actually, to be fair, would work really well against the Horsemen. But the Horsemen, on the other hand, are going to be diving in. On the arbitrary on the back, ignoring the spearmen as much as possible. Spearmen, though, a group of them are being peeled away to snipe out the horsemen as much as they can. Does lose the manganel in the end. Man and Tom attacking that front line, but arbitrary mass behind them. Those spearmen should be able to deal with that. Continues to try and raid on the right side and do some damage. Trying to get another keep. And this time, this keep probably should go up. Although, if you can get the outpost... Yeah, the keep will go up in the end. A lot of raiding action. I mean, Lord, he'll be fine with that. He'll be able to produce those villages. But what he won't be able to do necessarily is delete all this army. Look at the number of man-at-arms. Just not enough arbitrary air. And he's getting a good surround, picking off some good wins here in terms of fights. That's exactly what Louis Empty would want to do. Yeah, but there's no way Marino could secure the gold. He's really struggling on gold. Look at that. 99 in the bank. 80 gold coming in per minute. And that is not looking good. He's got one relic, of course. And... Yeah, Louis MT spots this. He recognizes that Marine Lord is suffering on gold and he's making him pay even more. And as time goes on, Marine Lord's gold situation can get worse and worse. Now, he does have the Guild Hall, but he only has 340 gold inside it. And yeah, that's not going to be able to be used anytime soon. Villagers coming out to take out the Ram, which is fine for the HRE, really, causing idle time when villagers gather rate. And Marine Lord, uh, his economy and population count is still pretty healthy overall, all things considered. But what is not healthy is his gold income. Being raided on the wood line and 
This man at times going to be tough to deal with, even with the Arbalest in placement. Because he's just got a lot, and he just can keep on pumping on. He's going to pump down the middle. Jean, she falls, and does return back to the fight instantaneously. Pays the, pays the fee, the tribute. And on the west side, looks like Louis MT just carving an entrance. He's being chased away, though, Louis MT. He needs to find another way to attack, another angle to attack from. He's got a bombard in the north. Look to take down that keep, and that's a key strategic location. I mean, that keep is already pretty low in health. Yeah, Marino suffering on gold, that's for sure. And the kind of crazy situation for the HRE, with all the great work that was done in the early stage of the game, gathering four relics. He'll be absolutely fine. In fact, he's even thinking about trade. He's actually thinking about trade as well, just to make sure the gold income is safe and secure. I love this play as well for Louis because he's making sure trade is not really an option by hanging out in the north end area of the map as well. Gonna get a second keep now. I would have loved to have seen that in a bit more forward position actually. Although these palisades might be blocking it. It's his own palisades to be fair. He's making a big push here on the right side. Premium units by the way and trouble for Marine Lord. His units are kind of interspersed in different areas and this is not helping him out. Taking one big fire here Louis. Perhaps going to try and break down the Red Palace. Which, by the way, is on its last limbs. There is already a ram there chipping away. And also a cannon placement inside the outpost. Just helping out those villagers. But the villagers do need to back away behind the stone walls. They do that in the end. But the constant raiding for Louis MT is causing all sorts of problems for Marine Lord. They're struggling to have a safe food income. Despite the town's had placements. Villagers have been idle for some time. Mass consecration on the barracks. So should be able to pump out units for food and wood. But he's really struggling on that gold income. He's got a good mass of Arbolitria though. That could buy him some time. He's got 26 Arbolitria. That will go somewhere to explain the lack of gold. He's going to lose the Red Palace though on the southeast. And the push is continuing here to mount for the HRE. He's got to be careful not to lose units in the middle. Does have a couple of Lanskanesh to try and dish out all sorts of damage. Horsemen coming into tank and... I mean, their units are just keep flooding for the HRE. Arbolitria getting good value on the back. It feels like maybe Lou MT might win this fight down the middle. I mean, he's got a lot of man at arms and a couple of Lanskanesh as well. If the Lanskanesh can get on top of the Arbolitria, that'll do it. But he doesn't even need to. Jean taps out. Marine Lord takes a heavy defeat on Gorge. What a great play with the HRE. Totally new style. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care and see you next time.